in the soul of our city longer than any chronological scroll could accurately tell. Acting is a guide to entertainment, adventure, learning, and wonder. You are both hands with all five fingers, pointing us towards refuge as we navigate the wilderness of an urban jungle. The richness of our collective sector breathes life into the streets, spilling across parkways, lanes, roads, and avenues like a heart that has abandoned the comfort of its sleeve to be with the people. You make this pocket of Turtle Island a city to build our dreams in. And depending on where your feet stand and upon what your eyes glance, you might catch a glimpse of a rainbow of storefronts, plazas and markets, a garden of community members that resemble the gatherings in our own families, with the only difference being that sacrifice and failure become a part of the painstaking process of planting hope where grief once grew. Your window pane beams with pride as you welcome the rays of a new day and familiar faces inside. Your presence turns boring into luxurious, anonymity into a society on the brink of crafting a unique cultural identity. Your resilience transforms the cynic mind that believes that we must leave the city to succeed, and your will to thrive is rivaled by your charitable smile. You know chaos, loss, loneliness, and corrosion. The feeling of witnessing the end of an era is far too common of an experience, but you also know that flowers can still bloom in a dying bouquet. So you raise your weary bodies out of your bed every day with the hopes that someone, somewhere, will sample your offerings and their patronage will suit their senses. Your business owner, you were made for piloting turbulent storms. When you feel like screaming into the void where no one can hear you because the phrase, I need you, teases the mirror that you stare into before your morning commute, I want you to know that the feeling is mutual. We need you. For the act of receiving is only useful when the act of giving is present at the table. So no matter if you reside close to Hintonburg, Strandherd, or Tang, in the Glebe, South Keys, or Orleans, or anywhere between the West and the East, we will not let a pandemic change our course, for this chapter is not about survival. It's about revival. Your business owner, we see you. Thank you. You've given us so much to be grateful for. Together, we will weather the storm. When you have poured of your cup to the point where your efforts appear minuscule, and the energy you use to stay afloat is washed away in the race to rest ashore, I know that what you have in store is so much more. Welcome to the 2020 Best Ottawa Business Awards, produced by the Ottawa Business Journal and Ottawa Board of Trade, in partnership with Rogers TV, presented by the University of Ottawa Telfer School of Management, and featuring the CEO of the year, John Sicard, the Lifetime Achievement recipient, Rob Ash, the CFO of the year, Julie Moran, the Newsmaker of the Year, Shopify, and dozens of other award winners. Coming to you from the Western Ottawa 22, please welcome your hosts, Mark Sutcliffe and Sandra Plagakis of Rogers Media. Welcome to the Bobs. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. We're very excited to be with you here at the Western Ottawa 22, this spectacular venue in downtown Ottawa. And a huge shout out to Jamal Jackson Rogers, Jamal the poet, who gave us that great introduction, that video and poem, a shout out to local business owners and entrepreneurs, a tribute to them, a letter to them, some words of encouragement. We really appreciate that. We're very excited about this evening and I'm super happy to be with my friend and colleague from Rogers Radio, Sandra Plagakis from KISS 105.3. Hey. Hi, Sandra. Hello, Mark, it's been a while. It's been good to see it's you today. It's been good to see you today, I, normally too. Normally, we talk on the phone now, and, you know, <laughs> we're still at a distance. I know. Which, you know, we've got to maintain. We can't even touch elbows or high-five. It's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm really glad to have you back as my co-host for the Bobs, and we actually do have a lot to celebrate tonight. I know it has been a very, very tough year for a lot of businesses and other people in our community. There's no question about that, Sandra. This has been an exceedingly difficult year for so many people. There are businesses that have been dramatically affected by it, restaurants, retail stores, other companies that have experienced real hardship this year. But there are also many that have adapted and pivoted and done a fantastic job creating new revenue, creating new jobs, and those are the companies that we're going to be celebrating tonight. And we want to thank all the frontline workers who do what you do. And of course, there's so many people to thank and celebrate tonight, including the Ottawa Board of Trade, who are 160 years strong in Ottawa. And tonight we begin with a few words from the president of the Ottawa Board of Trade, Su Ling Ching. Thank you, Sandra, and good evening, everyone.
On behalf of the Ottawa Board of Trade and the Ottawa Business Journal, welcome to the Best Ottawa Business Awards special broadcast. We are thrilled to be hosting this award show and recognizing the businesses in our community for your innovation, for your excellence, and for your resilience. Thank you to our community leaders for everything that you do, particularly during this time of change and challenge. Thank you to our sponsors for making this possible and particularly to our title sponsor, Telfer, for your ongoing support and leadership. Congratulations and thank you to all of our award recipients. You are the drivers of our community and our economy and we are so grateful for your ingenuity and your tenacity. The Ottawa Board of Trade is here to work with you for your success and to support you and tonight we are excited to celebrate you. We hope you enjoy the show. Back to you Sandra. Thank you, Su Ling Ching from the Ottawa Board of Trade. So you're ready to hand out some hardware tonight? Absolutely. Okay, we're gonna start off very big. This is an award we've handed out for 21 consecutive years. And I remember when we created this award in the year 2000, uh, it doesn't seem like that long ago now, but we've been doing this that long. It's uh, really remarkable. There's a who's who of business executives in Ottawa who have been honored with the CEO of the Year Award. Tonight, we're gonna celebrate the CEO of Canaxis. This is somebody who joined the company 27 years ago, made his way through the executive ranks, and is the CEO today. He is the 2020 CEO of the Year, John Sicard. <laughs> Bonjour, I'm Eric Lathrop. And I'm Paul Marshall. And we are from Boyden Global Executive Search and very proud sponsors of CEO of the Year this year. Outstanding leaders have never been more important than they are now. And my colleagues and I at Boyden have never been more impressed by what our local CEO community has accomplished in these unprecedented times. Good work, Ottawa. Un grand merci. 26 years ago, Canaxis was a really, really interesting boutique. And uh, they did a lot of very custom work for some of the world's largest manufacturers. But I wouldn't call it a product company back then. It was more of a services company um, and more of a custom software shop uh, back then. Now, when I joined, that's when things shifted. And we transformed ourselves back in 1994 into a true software company, true product company. Every company has a personality, and ours has just been growing as, as you, and maturing, as you can imagine. One of those key elements is we learned how to be profitable, like on purpose. I think profit is a muscle, and like any muscle, has to be exercised. If you can't continuously and consistently generate profit, um, it becomes diff difficult to sustain growth. And so we learned that very early on. I, I still remember back in 2005 saying those words. We should learn how to be a profitable SaaS company on purpose. Let's go learn that skill. And it's become part of our uh, DNA. Like we don't know another way to be. We are revolutionizing the way planning, supply chain planning happens in this world. It's, it's an absolute pivotal moment uh, for supply chain. And uh, what, we're, you know, what we're being recognized for is driving hyper agility where agility didn't exist before. And in this pandemic, in fact, Canaxis has never been more relevant, ever. The entire planet has been shocked, if you will. Uh, every supply chain is being affected simultaneously in every vector, every size of company, every country. And so uh, today, more than ever, they're looking for, you know, I, I'd say a competency in responding to change and driving hyper agility in their supply chain. He's a very charismatic and energetic person. He's used those skills to help us grow. In fact, he's been around and done almost every role he jokes other than the CFO, ranging from coding the software to installing the software. He genuinely believes in people. We all believe in people. People matter. And that's a key principle here at Canaxis, and it's a way we shape our culture to help us grow rapidly throughout the world. John really connects with the employees. He actually really cares about every single person that works at Canaxis. And that's something that you can't fake. It just comes through automatically and, and people know that he cares about them. So that connection um, that he has with the employees is, uh, is a really great aspect of, of his leadership style. I am a, um, 
you know, an unabashed, proud um, Canadian and Ottawan. I, I, I love this city. Uh, there was a time this city was viewed as Silicon Valley North. And, uh, you know, we might have lost a bit of that tarnish. Well, it's coming back. And uh, I'm engaged in as many activities as possible to, to you know, to shine the bell, if you will, uh, to bring uh, tech uh, excellence back back to Ottawa. So we're, we're obviously, we're, we're uh, expanding. Our headquarters is being built now, our new headquarters. We ran out of space. Since January 1, we have, we have grown staff by over 50%, even during this pandemic. So we are, you know, uh, pedal to the metal, if you will. Uh, and, uh, and again, I, you know, it goes back to this, this goal of building the most iconic, successful tech company to ever exist in this, in this country. Wow, it is so inspiring to see John Sicard and Canaxis doing so well and chasing down such an ambitious goal. Congratulations once again to the 2020 CEO of the Year, John Sicard. And we have some real world-class talent in this city. Present company excluded, of course. Uh, we need to celebrate tonight's lead sponsor, who has dedicated himself for more than 50 years to producing top talent for the business community. I am referring to the University of Ottawa Telfer School of Management. Joining us right now is James Price, Telfer's Executive Director of Development and Community. And James, I understand there are some connections tonight between the Bobs and Telfer. Tell us about that. Thanks, Mark and Sandra. It's uh, a pleasure to be here. The Telfer School of Management is certainly very proud to be a sponsor of the Bob Awards for the last several years. Uh, we're also equally proud to be a major talent generator um, for the business community here in the city of Ottawa. Um, and that's more even highlighted tonight with uh, award winners Rob Ash with the Lifetime Achievement Award, who is a proud Telfer alumnus, as well as uh, Julie Moran, CFO of the year. Um, and we've also had a long standing tradition in terms of producing talent. I think the leadership teams of at least half of the 26 companies receiving awards uh, this evening uh, will be and, and have Telfer members as part of their leadership team. James, at last year's gala, the dean of the Telfer School talked about a new vision. How has the pandemic affected that? I think um, uh, as we were launching our new vision, um, it's really about reimagining the role of a management school and a business school in a tackling pressing problems. And um, so we've just recently launched what we call the Telfer Vision for a Better Canada, which is really bringing both our research, our programs, and our, effect, uh, our impact on developing students to address some of the big problems, uh, including sustainability and putting it at the uh, center of decision making, uh, which is, I think is particularly important in a pandemic um, when we look at climate change and how we build back better or stronger. Uh, second major area is really around health systems transformation. And we're even realizing in the pandemic that this isn't only uh, a medical issue, but it's really about how the health system responds to issues like a pandemic and others. And we've got a lot of research and programs that are working on that. And the third area which we've seen is really around um, how do we create thriving organizations? And with the workplace completely disrupted uh, in terms of how we're functioning over the last few months, that research is even more important in terms of workplace well-being how do you work in virtual teams, et cetera. And then finally, I think we're seeing as we begin to build back better, we're seeing a lot of innovation, a lot of entrepreneurship happening. Um, and really that's about creating a, an inclusive and innovative environment for us to uh, advance entrepreneurial activities. So at the end of the day, uh, our vision for a better Canada, which includes a greener Canada, a healthier Canada, a happier Canada, and a wealthier Canada, is even more important. James, thank you so much for sharing those priorities with us. And thank you for all the great work that's being done at the University of Ottawa and Telfer. We need institutions like that in our community to help our economy and inspire new generations of entrepreneurs. Thank you so much for your support of the Bobs. Great, thank you. We've heard from the CEO of the year, so now it's time to award three important categories. Best new businesses. The hashtag is next big thing and the recipients were selected by Invest Ottawa and RBC. And finally, our Serious Tech Lives Here recipient selected by the Canada North Business Association. So who are these fantastic recipients? Everybody just do what you do. Good evening, I'm John Liptak and this is my daughter Patricia Liptak-Satov and we're from Oakwood. She's also in my bubble. 
Good evening, my name is Kevin Skinner. I'm the Vice President and District Manager for PCL Constructors Canada. Just earlier, John and Patricia and I were talking about how proud we are of the construction industry. We were shut down in Quebec and Ontario, and uh, we got back together, we, f we uh, collaborated, we bonded, we put in protocols and processes to ensure that our construction sites were safe. We got back to work, and today I like to say we're as busy as ever. It was certainly a stressful time, but we're excited for brighter days ahead. Yes. Vital Tracer has developed a medical smartwatch that monitors all vital signs. The watch uses biosensors and machine learning algorithms to measure blood pressure, respiratory rate, blood oxygen levels, body temperature, and the heart's electrical signals. It's the brainchild of biomedical engineer Azade Dasmalchi. Vital Tracer recently got a big boost when Dasmalchi received the MyTax Social Entrepreneur Award. The company has ordered from four hospitals and hopes to have the watch certified as a medical device by next fall. Agile Work Evolutions is on a mission to remove barriers and future-proof organizations for remote working. The company has developed what it calls North America's first services-enabled software. This software helps employers implement more flexible and efficient work environments. Demand took off with the pandemic. In the first seven months of 2020, revenues grew by 900%. The company founders also donated about $50,000 worth of tools to help employers pivot their teams during the pandemic. Quantum computing may become a reality in a few short years. This means that conventional ways to secure the Internet and Internet-based communications will become obsolete. Quantropy is working on better ways to secure data and privacy in the age of quantum computing. Quantropy says its technology will be easy to deploy, cost-effective, and able to upgrade existing networks. The company intends to become the standard for secure quantum communications. <laughs> Small businesses, entrepreneurs, founders, you're the beating heart of our community. It's been a tough year, and we're here to help. This summer, RBC asked Canadians to show local businesses some love, and they did. Through Canada United, $14 million was raised to help small businesses recover. Congratulations to our next Best Thing recipients, Ottawa's most promising startups. Over to you, Michael. Thanks so much, Marjolaine. I'm Mike Tremblay, the President and CEO of Invest Auto and Bayview Yards. We're always thrilled to participate in the Bob's Awards, celebrating the very best accomplishments of businesses in our region. As a company, we've not wasted the crisis. We have done a lot of new programming in support of the recovery, including digital Main Street, recruitment programming, and most recently, the launch of Area X Auto, the future plex of innovation and collaboration. I know that our very best days are ahead, and I know that because the world needs Ottawa. Thank you. Fellow app has a lot going for it. The founding team includes entrepreneur Aidan Mizrahi. Aidan co-founded Fluidware, which brought Silicon Valley's SurveyMonkey to Ottawa in 2016. Last year, Fellow app secured an investment round worth $8.75 million. Fellow app then began 2020 with the high-profile hiring of Aaron Blasky from Elspark as its new Director of Marketing. This software as a service helps managers improve their relationships with employees. It's just the kind of tool that managers need when their teams are working from home. Noibu is a recent graduate of the University of Ottawa's Maker Launch program. Noibu helps e-commerce retailers retain customers and increase sales. It detects and addresses critical errors that can disrupt the online shopping experience. Retailers appreciate more than ever the importance of having a website that runs smoothly. Noibu is proving to be the right service at the right time as online shopping spikes thanks to the pandemic. Clients now include cosmetics giant Avon and clothing retailer Jack and Jones. Neurovine is remaking the science of concussion diagnosis and treatment. It combines wearable technology and machine learning to track patients' concussion recovery and progress. Data collected by Neurovine allows doctors to prescribe appropriate treatment in a groundbreaking new way. 
The goal is to develop a system where doctors and patients can connect through an online portal. Trials are already underway at Bruyere Research Institute and Carleton University. With the pandemic, Neurovine has gone online to expand its trial recruitment across Canada. Hi, my name is Jamie Petten, and I'm pleased to be here this evening as president of the Canada North Business Association. On behalf of the board of directors, I'd like to extend a sincere congratulations to all of the winners this evening, including those who are located in Canada's largest technology park. Each of you have shown tremendous resilience as you've navigated and adapted through these challenging times. Serious tech truly does live here. The past 12 months have been transformative for ReLogix. The company received $4 million in venture capital and tripled the size of its team. ReLogix offers a workspace analytics platform equipped with IoT-enabled sensors. When the pandemic struck, ReLogix adapted its platform to create a COVID workspace monitoring dashboard. The ReLogix team rallied to make this new product available within 72 hours. This dashboard helps employers ensure a safe work environment for their teams. Fuseville is a software platform for digital companies that makes managing their subscription billing simple. In its last fiscal year, Fuseville grew its customer base by over 155% and its team by 40%. The company has struck that delicate balance between rapid growth and client service and retention. Fostering a strong company culture is critical. The Fuseville team has rallied during the pandemic to support a variety of important social causes. As business and finance becomes more complex in this day and age, of course, the role of the CFO is becoming even more important. And that's why a couple of years ago, we partnered with Deloitte to create the CFO of the Year Award. And tonight's recipient is a remarkable person in our community who helps lead one of Ottawa's most important and long established companies. She works at Minto, which was founded way back in 1955. In 2018, Minto made a very bold move. It issued a $230 million initial public offering that saw the company spin off a portion of its apartment portfolio into a public investment vehicle. And since then, the book value of this real estate investment trust has grown to more than $2 billion. Please watch this profile of Julie Morin, the 2020 CFO of the year. The video profile is followed by the Bob's Best Performance Awards and our Best Not-for-Profit. Good evening, my name is Dan Dari. I'm the market leader for the National Capital Region at Deloitte. We are pleased to continue on supporting and sponsoring the CFO Award and recognize the top finance executive within our city. We at Deloitte have been tirelessly working with our clients, our communities, and our governments on how to navigate through the current pandemic, and most importantly, on how we as a community and as a country will thrive into the next normal. We would be pleased to hear from you on how you are planning to thrive in this next normal. The IPO really started uh, towards the end of 2017. There was a growing need for some of the members of the Greenberg family to do some estate planning, but we also had growing needs for capital and uh, we wanted to explore what our options were and obviously public markets was one of them. Uh, so we called our lead banks and have started having discussions with them in terms of whether or not there would be an appetite uh, for another multi-res REIT here in Canada. And the answer came back very quickly from them. They thought our story was wonderful. They liked the history of Minto. They liked the fact that we had a long legacy and our reputation. They loved the quality of the assets as well. So all of that together, they thought we had a very compelling story. And you know, as they say, the rest is history. Uh, it was an extremely successful launch. Uh, we wanted to raise $200 million. And when the roadshow was finished, we had more than 900 million in demand. So we were more than four times covered. And that was really a testament to the Minto history and the reputation and the quality of our, our assets. So it's just a wonderful story for, for Minto and the Greenberg family. 
We've had a great trajectory, honestly, since the IPO. We started off at about $1.1 in assets, and by the end of 2019, so a mere 18 months, we were over $2 billion. So we almost doubled in size. And, you know, from a suite count perspective, we started out around 4,300 suites, and we're now at over 7,200. But I think for us, the important factor is that, you know, we, we went into markets we had never been before. So we obviously grew in markets where, where we were before Calgary and Toronto, but more importantly, we uh, we forged our way into Montreal, which was always a market that was on our radar and we wanted to access. The IPO was for sure a huge milestone in my career. It was an extremely rewarding project, and you know I always say that as long as you're learning, you're developing, you're having fun, and you're putting all of that into a toolbox for future projects and future ventures, then it's all that that matters. And I was able to achieve that uh, with this project, so it's, it's been uh, extremely rewarding. Greetings, Quay, bonsoir. I'm Claude Brulé, President and CEO of Algonquin College. We take great pride in sponsoring the Marketing Award at the 2020 Best Ottawa Business Awards. During the pandemic, Algonquin College worked diligently to share its expertise with the communities we serve. For Algonquin, community strength and partnerships are key to our collective recovery. When the pandemic hit, Ottawa Tourism took action to offset the huge loss in visitor spending. It launched a digital summer savings passport for local residents called hashtag MyOttawaPass. This free, mobile-based pass featured discounts and offers for more than 80 local businesses. This gave residents an incentive to patronize local businesses. Hashtag MyOttawaPass exceeded all expectations. Over the summer, the pass generated over 81,000 web page views and almost 10,000 pass registrations. Everybody just do what you do. Stop, 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 stop. Hi, I'm Janet, president of Janet LeBlanc Associates. We are delighted to sponsor the Best Customer Experience Award. We believe the best experiences are intentionally designed, adapting quickly during disruptive change to meet new customer expectations. If you believe improving your customer experience will drive business growth, give us a call. The Geotech scientific team understands that every department in the organization must always be thinking about the customer's experience. It all comes back to Geotech's core values, creativity, passion, and integrity. These values are embedded into staff meetings, the hiring process, the company's management style, and performance evaluations. Employee performance is measured by responsiveness, professionalism, teamwork, and outside-the-box thinking. This ensures that every customer gets a great product, great service, and great support. Hi, I'm Jesse Mitchell from Strader Ferris International. For many years, we've been a proud sponsor of the Best Performance and Experts Award. Since COVID struck, Strader Ferris has been a vital gateway for local businesses to access the U.S. market through our warehouses in Ogdensburg, New York, and Prescott, Ontario. If you need help with cross-border logistics or custom brokerage services, we're here to help. MDS Aeros Support Corporation has worked to ensure the reliability and safety of air travel for more than 30 years. It works with the world's largest aerospace companies to deliver test facilities in 23 countries. MDS continues to invest in its leadership, its technology, and the skills of its team to secure new business. Exports represent 90% of MDS's total revenue. Over the last 10 years, MDS revenue and headcount have both grown by more than 300%. I'm Lise Bourgeois, President and CEO of Collège La Cité. We are proud to sponsor Best Performance in Social Entrepreneurship Award. 
La Cité has worked diligently to support entrepreneurs in several fields and above all, to train the highly skilled new generation of workers ready for the changes of tomorrow. Do not hesitate to contact our experts to help you through these difficult times. La Cité Ensemble. Restaurant and bar closures in the spring left Bose Brewery with thousands of kegs of beer it couldn't ship. So it found a way to turn that beer into hand sanitizer. Bose teamed up with Dunrobin Distilleries in April. Bose had the space and Dunrobin Distilleries had the equipment in search of a home. Within weeks, they were producing an extra strength hand sanitizer. A portion of the sanitizer is donated to healthcare workers and community services organizations across the national capital region. Hi, I'm Seema Aurora from Tag HR. We're very proud to sponsor the best performance in HR category at the Bob Awards. Tag HR has pivoted our entire staffing processes to be completely virtual to provide our clients and candidates with permanent and contract solutions for your IT and professional staffing needs. Do contact us today to discuss your staffing needs for success in the new normal and find out how we can assist you in your staffing today. Put people first. Pronto Forms isn't letting the COVID-19 pandemic and remote working erode its team spirit. For 2020, the company launched a people-first strategy to strengthen its distinct culture and position it as an employer of choice. This effort quickly proved its value during the pandemic. Staff have remained highly engaged with virtual events and activities meant to maintain a strong sense of team. And the number of job applicants is up by 180% from last last year thanks to a social media campaign. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight for the Bob's Awards. Desjardins, you know, has been part of this awards for many years. And this year, we're back with helping communities and entrepreneurs in our region. This year alone, we gave back 1.5 million to the communities. I want to congratulate all the nominees and the winners tonight. And thank you, most important, thank you for being here tonight. Have a great evening. Rock Networks is growing its business by bridging Canada's rural digital divide. Rock's Community Broadband Networks program helps rural communities plan, design, and build a high-quality, revenue-generating broadband network. Bandwidth on this network can then be leased to a variety of Internet service providers. This open access model provides better pricing and choice to rural residents compared to traditional Internet services. The first project with a total value of $70 million is underway with Pick 2 County in Nova Scotia. Good evening. I'm Julie Beauchat, Dean of the School of Business at Algonquin College. It is our pleasure to sponsor the Co-op Award at the 2020 Best of Ottawa Business Awards. During these difficult times, our college worked to support our community by donating protective equipment, offering easy access to education, and providing skilled co-op workforce. If you're looking for support, make co-op part of your hiring strategy. Our students are eager to support your team. At BlackBerry, co-op students are embraced as productive members of the team. The company welcomes about 150 students each term at its locations across North America. About 50 of these students work at BlackBerry's Ottawa campus. They fill many roles from technology to HR and finance. Many are hired upon graduation. A calendar of social and networking events is a big part of the BlackBerry experience. This includes group group activities with peers and virtual fireside chats with executive leaders. Everybody just do what you do. 
Little Ray's Nature Center has grown to become the largest animal rescue in Canada. Its team delivers one of the most extensive and diverse animal education and outreach programs in North America. Little Ray's is also active with conservation efforts around the world through its Boots on the Ground program. The Canadian Association of Zoos and Aquariums recently recognized Little Ray's for its work in Myanmar. Little Ray's work with the World Conservation Society in Myanmar to save critically endangered turtle species. My name is Paul Gandon, CEO of Commissioners Ottawa. We are the proud sponsor of the Bob's Nonprofit of the Year Award. As an essential service, Commissioners Ottawa continues to protect people, property, and information, pandemic or no pandemic. Choose Commissioners Ottawa if you need security services, fingerprints and background screening, or security systems and IoT networks. More than security. Pallium is arming healthcare professionals with the skills to improve palliative care. Its training courses address end of life care as well as influence healthcare practice and promote positive change in the system. Since 2014, this nonprofit has trained over 29,000 healthcare professionals across Canada. With the pandemic, Pallium partnered with the Canadian Medical Association to take its courses online and offer them for free. 10,000 professionals across Canada have already taken advantage of these free resources. Well, congratulations to the winners of the Best Performance Awards and also the Best Not-for-Profit. And once again, hearty congratulations to the 2020 CFO of the Year, Julie Moray of Minto. Well, Sandra, this year was a fantastic year, a breakthrough year for many local businesses. And foremost among them, of course, is a company we all know about, and that is Shopify. Shopify. When the pandemic hit the hardest, a lot of businesses needed an online e-commerce platform. Naturally, they would all turn to Shopify, which is why Shopify has been named the Bob's 2020 Newsmaker of the Year. And just a few days ago, I had a chance to have a chat with Harley Finkelstein, who was recently promoted to become the president of Shopify. Harley's a great business leader and a mentor to so many other CEOs and business owners in Ottawa. He does so much for the entrepreneurial community in this city. So we're gonna share that interview with you now, followed by the deals of the year and the best business awards. Hi. I'm Gordon Wright, partner at MMP here in Ottawa, and we are the proud sponsor of the Newsmaker of the Year Award. Throughout this pandemic, MMP has been working diligently with our clients and local Canadian business to not just help them with their accounting and tax matters, but performance improvement and certainly new technology adoption. We are dedicated to help local businesses chart their path ahead. So Harley, first of all, congratulations on Shopify being the 2020 Newsmaker of the Year. Thank you so much. And thank you to, to you, Mark, and, and the Auto Business Journal and the entire Ottawa community. Um, Shopify is a product of our community and a product of our city that we were raised in, which is Ottawa. And it's, uh, it's very meaningful for us to win this, this amazing award. And you, uh, this is a, might be a familiar feeling for you because I know uh, you, you've won this award before. You co-hosted the Bobs with me one year. Uh, Toby was, of course, the CEO of the year one year so you guys have been very deservedly all over the bobs for the last few years well in and anticipation for this call I, I actually i pulled this out so this this hangs on the wall of my office um but in uh in 2013 um i was the newsmaker of the year um and so seven years later it feels really cool that shopify is the newsmaker of the year our company so um it has been uh wow. Yeah, it's 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 been an amazing ride, and and we're we're grateful for this great honor. Oh well, th we're it's so well deserved, and I I I don't think the conversation was long before <laughs> making the judgment call on this one. Um, but this has been Harley such an unusual year. So, can you describe what 2020 has been like for Shopify and for your team and for you personally? Yeah. Well, look, Shopify is successful when. The merchants and the entrepreneurs and the small businesses that use Shopify are successful. And this has been, for a lot of them, uh, a pretty amazing year. Um, 
I've been saying for a while since the pandemic started that it feels like a tale of, of two different types of entrepreneurs, two different types of businesses since the pandemic started. It was, it's the tale of the resistant ones, the ones that are struggling to adapt, the ones that are holding on to preconceived notions and maybe a traditional way of doing things. And, and they've struggled. Um, but on the other side, you see these resilient entrepreneurs, these resilient retailers and brands, and, and a lot of them are on Shopify. And so for them, they have seen incredible growth, incredible prosperity because they've adapted so quickly. And as the platform that hosts these million more stores, we've tried to keep up with them and to make sure they have everything they need, whether that's new places to sell, uh, like we announced the Walmart partnership or the TikTok partnership, or it's new functionality, new areas that we can help them with, things like capital and shipping and fulfillment services. And what we're trying to do is create, um, we're trying to answer the question, what would happen if entrepreneurship was easy and accessible? And we think that would create a much better world. We think entrepreneurship is the greatest way for human beings to self-actualize, to find independence, to survive, um, and, and even thrive in, when, when times are tough as they are right now. And so um, it is wonderful for Shopify to receive this award, but really this award goes to the 1 million and more entrepreneurs and small businesses that are on Shopify doing their life's work. What advice do you have for some of the companies that are still struggling with this, the traditional bricks and mortar businesses, Main Street retail, that sort of thing about how they can adapt, especially as we've witnessed really this year, an acceleration of this trend. This pandemic and, and what COVID has done is it, it has forced us to rethink everything. And those that take it um, with stride, that take it with ambition, that are optimistic about what these changes will bring wherever possible. Um, they're the ones that are that are surviving and they're the ones that are thriving. And that's not to say that everyone's in the same boat. I mean, we're all in the same storm, but we're all in different boats. But if you are surviving and maybe even thriving, find others that you can bring along with you. This community is only strong when all of us uh, pull each other up. And I think um, that's what makes Ottawa so unique. I've, I've said this on stage with you at Bob's maybe five or seven years ago, we don't have as many people here in Ottawa as they do in places like Toronto or New York or, or Silicon Valley. But what we do have is we have this incredible connection, this incredible loyalty to one another, this incredible community that lifts each other up and helps one another. And I think that's what makes Ottawa so unique. And that's what makes the entrepreneurs in Ottawa so special. I'm Megan Wallace, partner and member of the Business Law Group at Pearlie Robertson Hill & McDougall LLP. We are a proud sponsor of the Deals of the Year Awards. Pearlie Robertson Hill & McDougall has been a member of Ottawa's business community for close to 50 years. And during that time, we have witnessed, participated in, and celebrated the success of Ottawa's businesses. We are still here for Ottawa's businesses during these difficult times. If you need assistance navigating these new issues and dynamics, please reach out. In June, Solink announced its second venture capital round worth $23 million. The lead investor in both of Solink's investment rounds is Omer's Ventures, the venture capital arm of the Ontario Municipal Employees Retirement System. Solink's cloud-based platform integrates security camera footage with point of sale and inventory management systems. All this data is accessible through any mobile device. Everybody just do what you do. Amazon and construction partner Broccolini are building what will be the single largest building in the national capital region. This will be Amazon's second local order fulfillment center. It will be located in Barhaven's City Gate Business Park. Construction is expected to be completed by the fall of 2021. The multi-level facility will have more than 2 million square feet in total. It will feature automated robotic systems to pick and pack orders of smaller items. For 27 years, Kettleman's Bagel Company has made bagels the traditional way. 
Kettleman's has three locations in Ottawa and big growth plans. Founder Craig Buckley hopes to have more than 20 locations between Ottawa, Toronto and Montreal. Kettleman's announced over the summer that its first Toronto area location will open in Etobicoke. Kettleman's also announced a new location for Canada that will be the world's first Montreal-style bagel shop with a drive through Canaxis has become a global leader for supply chain management over the past 30 years. Its customer base includes brands like Ford, Honeywell, and Procter & Gamble. In June, Canaxis moved into the retail and packaged consumer goods markets. It acquired Toronto-based Rubicloud in a U.S. $60 million cash deal. Rubicloud uses machine learning and AI to help its customers predict how much inventory they need to keep shelves stocked and to create strategies for sales and pricing. Blues Fest and the National Arts Centre refused to give up on live performances and musical festivals with the pandemic. They teamed up to create a summer program called Hashtag Canada Performs at RBC Blues Fest Drive-In. The drive-in was designed to accommodate up to 440 vehicles. Concert goers could drive in to safely watch live concerts by a variety of Canadian artists. Anyone in Canada could also watch the live stream concerts through Facebook. The drive-in employed 200 people in the live event business. Bonsoir, good evening. I'm Jean-Benoit, Regional Director for Enbridge Gas. We are proud, especially this year, to sponsor the Best Business Award. Since the start of COVID, we have been working hard to continue to deliver the energy we all depend on, now more than ever, while making significant changes to the way we do business in order to protect the health and safety of our employees and the public. Whether you are just starting out as a new business or have been operating one for many years, thank you for your contribution to the social and economic development of Ottawa. Life takes energy. MDS Aero Support Corporation works with the biggest names in aerospace to test and maintain the engine systems of commercial aircraft. The company credits its success to a culture that is high performance and a strategy that's balanced and ambitious. Constant investment is made in MDS's leadership, technical expertise, and product offering. That's why it now has 75% share in two key market segments. Customer feedback and the big trends in Aviation will decide where MDS goes next. Sign Language Interpreting Associates Ottawa provides sign language translation and interpretation. Its in-person services are widely used for conferences, court proceedings, government services, hospitals, and in a variety of other settings. In 2018, the company launched a Video Remote Interpreting, or VRI, service. With this service, a sign language interpreter facilitates between a deaf and a hearing person via video call. VRI has driven huge growth in the company's business over the past two years. Geotech Scientific's wireless monitoring technology ensures that concrete is strong, long-lasting, and not wasted during the production process. This is important considering that concrete production is a big contributor to greenhouse gas emissions. Demand for Geotech's technology continues to grow. The company saw growth of 32% in both revenue and customers during its last fiscal year. Customers include many of North America's largest construction contractors. Geotech is also working with Canada's Trade Commissioner Service to grow export sales. Well, can you believe it, Sandra? Here we are almost at the end of the bobs, but we are not done yet. There is still another award to give out. As is tradition at the Bobs, we like to save one of the biggest awards of the night until the end. This is the 2020 Lifetime Achievement Award, which means that if you win this, you don't have to achieve anymore. You're like, you're good, <laughs> yeah. okay? Just like, you know, relax, go to bed, sleep in tomorrow, you're good, you're done. Yeah, your lifetime, you're, you've achieved right. a lifetime of work. You've won exactly. the award, you can like underachieve now, you're fine. 
So this is the 10th time that we are giving out this incredible award. Uh, there have been some terrific recipients in the past. This year's winner has very deep roots in our community. He grew up in Ottawa. He actually attended the Telfer School of Management at the University of Ottawa. And most importantly, he played a critical role in building and then leading Canada's first billion dollar software company. The 2020 Lifetime Achievement Award winner is the former CEO of Cognos, Rob Ash. And here's what two previous Lifetime Award recipients had to say about Rob. Well, it's just that. It's a Lifetime Achievement Award. You're not, not to be in kind of flash in the pan. You've exhibited some uh, continuity in life, success in life. You're, as you have grown, your involvement in the city has grown, and you've impacted many lives in the process. Uh, and I would say in Rob's case, all very positively. And when you combine all of those things between continuity, business success, uh, and philanthropy, uh, we have a great candidate and a, and, a, and a great new member for the Lifetime Achievement Award. Rob's had a tremendous impact on both community and business. As business, he was CEO of Cognos and engineered the sale to IBM. Uh, on the community, he's been involved in many, many activities in athletics at, at the University of Ottawa. The, uh, he was a member of the board of the uh, Ottawa Hospital Foundation, has been heavily involved with the, with the Ottawa Hospital for many years, and just recently joined the cabinet for the new uh, civic campus for the Ottawa Hospital. So, tremendous community individual as well. Hi, I'm Steve McIntyre, an audit partner at Ernst & Young. And I'm Chris Jerome, a tax partner at Ernst & Young. EY is a proud sponsor of this year's Lifetime Achievement Award. At EY, we've continued to support our clients and local business leaders to help them through these challenging times. And this evening, we're extremely excited to be part of this annual celebration of Ottawa's business leaders. Despite the challenges in the last eight months, we continue to be inspired by business leaders that have not only survived, but have been finding opportunities for growth. If you have any questions about your business, or if you'd like to discuss potential growth opportunities, please reach out to us. So Rob, congratulations. Thanks, Mark. And let's go back to the beginning, because you were at the University of Ottawa, not yep. far from where we're sitting That's right, right now. That's right, yeah, around the corner. Uh, and going playing basketball. Classes. Yep. And did you say going to a few going classes? Going to a few classes, yeah. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> did you ever imagine having this kind of career? Um, no, to be frank with you. I was, uh, you know, at the time, um, pretty serious basketball player, I like to say. Um, Realized that about third year that that wasn't going to get me very far and got serious about my schoolwork and uh, became a CPA. Um, but I, I must admit I never really imagined I'd get so involved in the business community as I have. Um, been a pleasant surprise. So when you look back on your run at Cognos, what are some of the memories that come to mind, especially maybe from the early days before yeah. people got to know it as this Canadian powerhouse in the software industry. Yeah, I mean, you know, Mark, in the early days, there weren't many software companies. I, you know, IBM in the 70s had separated software from hardware as a part of, as a, in response to Department of Justice antitrust um, legislation. And so there's a very small number of software companies. That, you know, the largest in the world might have been Cullinet, might have been 50, 100 million dollars. And here's Cognos, uh, Quasar at the time, um, having innovated around reporting what ultimately became business intelligence. Um, you know, I think Mike Potter, who was really the, the, the brains behind the whole thing uh, back then, um, risk taker, visionary, entrepreneur, saw an opportunity to build the software company. Um, there were a lot of uh, doubters, I think. Um, and here we went public in 1986 and really started on a re really quite a role. So, I guess when I look back on it, I think about having to explain to people what software was. You know, my mother thought it was the stuff you put leftovers in in the fridge. I mean, it was really, software was new. People didn't understand what it was. It's hard to imagine that now, you know, 30, 35 years later when, uh, you know, software is running the world. But back then, this was a whole new thing. And so I think I think back to sort of the disruption that we started way back then. Um, you know, we we're on the TSX at the time in 1986, struggling to explain to people, you know, how we could 
you know, drive profit and drive growth and what it all meant. And uh, so I think the team back then were pretty innovative and pretty disruptive, just like today's disruptors are, just in different context. Yeah, and can you talk more about that context? Because I, I think it re it's really interesting. Your career was during a period of time where, uh, as you say, software went from kind of this really difficult to explain thing to being proliferated throughout the world and, yeah. and where and maybe initially having a career in high tech wasn't really a thing that people aspired to do uh, to being, you know, well, not a, just a huge career, employer. Not just being in high tech. I mean, keep in mind, Ottawa was a telecom city. Yeah. So the, here's, a, here's this, you know, we have Mitel, we have Newbridge, and Cognos, we're talking about business intelligence and democratizing data and, you know, before data was readily available to people in a big way like it is today at your fingertips, right? And so, you know, it was a very significant transition through, you know, the sort of the, I'll say the economic malaise of the late 80s and early 90s. Um, I remember one financial analyst, uh, it's kind of prescient to think back to a financial analyst during a time just before we went public in the U.S. and the markets went south on everybody. Um, I think they called it stagflation at the time. Um, and this analyst in the U.S. said, you know, the, no one is going to get in the way of the automation slash digitization of the economy. I mean, that's like late 80s, early 90s, right? And what have we seen happen? We've just seen that, you know, prolific digitization, automation of everything we do, and it's made software prolific. Everybody knows what software, no, no one doesn't know what software yeah. is, right? And now you get, uh, you know, all the way to today, we've got COVID and um, the digital economy is accelerated by 10 years, overnight literally overnight and it's a permanent change and so you know when we used to uh, you know be out there telling people one it was all about the software not the hardware that was like the 1980s kind of mantra and then in the 90s we had to tell people it was all about the data it wasn't about you know the automation it was actually about the data the intelligence is in the data and then in the early 2000s with the advent of the internet and uh, big data and now AI where it's just it's just second nature to everybody that the values the value of what you learn what you can do with your customers what you do with your people how you can make the world a better place is actually in the data and uh, so you know it gives me a little bit of pride to have been part of that study what you know it wasn't me it was thousands of people out at Riverside Drive that were you know um, Innovating around this whole concept, um, you know, uh, uh, but I, you know, I feel kind of proud to have been part of that. What what we were um, kind of zealots and revolutionaries for is now second nature. I mean, that's kind of interesting. Once again, congratulations to Rob Ash, the 2020 Lifetime Achievement Award recipient. What a great career! What an inspiring story. Thank you, Rob, for all you've done for our community. And a big thank you to all the businesses in our community, uh, even those who are not being honored tonight. It's been a tough year and there's been so much resilience. It really speaks well, Sandra, to where our economy is going in 2021 when this pandemic is finally over. There are many people to thank for tonight's broadcast. Of course, we have to start with the Telfer School of Management. Thank you so much. Of course, our friends at Rogers 22, including Gavin Lumsden and Ian Murphy and Dave over there. Uh, also, we'd like to thank the entire team at Ottawa Business Events Lauren LaRock and Don Mercero, and finally, our video producer and videographer, Khaled Abdel Jabbar. Thank you so much. And we want to thank you for watching. And if you'd like to see a replay of this or share it with anyone, please go to bestottawabusiness.ca. And if you're watching live, we invite you to join the after party now, which will be hosted by Michael Curran of the Ottawa Business Journal and Su Ling Ching of the Ottawa Board of Trade. You can join us at that at bestottawabusiness.ca. So on behalf of the Ottawa Business Journal and the Ottawa Board of Trade, we want to say to all of you, thank you for your hard work this year. Congratulations to all the recipients. We know the best is yet to come in our community. Stay strong, stay safe, and thank you for watching. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media.
Now you can own your favorite Disney movie